Welcome to Chapter 3, Measuring Sustainability. In this chapter, we discuss mainly the United Nations Millennium Goals and the U.S. National Sustainability Planning Goals. We finish briefly by looking at how other cities and countries around the world are implementing these goals. Let's get started. Historically, businesses operated in service solely to the financial bottom line. In 1994, author and entrepreneur John Elkington introduced the concept of the triple bottom line with hopes of transforming the financial accounting focus-based system to a comprehensive approach that measures impact and su success. As a result of the triple bottom line theory and application, some businesses began to recognize the connection among environmental health, social well-being, an organization's financial success and resilience. To get an accurate perspective of their operations beyond what is reflected in their profit and loss statements, organizations must fully account for all costs associated with doing business. Here are some fast facts about the triple bottom line. First, it is a transformation framework to help businesses and organizations move towards a regenerative and more sustainable future. Triple Bottom Line offers tools to, that help an organization measure, benchmark, set goals, and eventually evolve towards more sustainable systems and models. It illustrates that if an organization is only focused on profit while ignoring people on the planet, it cannot account for the full cost of doing business and thus will not succeed long term. Triple bottom line theory expands conventional business success metrics to include an organization's contributions to social well-being, environmental health, and a just economy. These bottom, bottom line categories are often referred to as the three P's, people, planet, and prosperity. While there are three categories that make up the triple bottom line, it is important to remember that they are not siloed, though a system's through a system theory lens, the three P's are all interconnected. Given that the foundation of sustainability is systems thinking, a single initiative that falls under people, planet, or prosperity will also create an impact in the others. As we go forward in this course, we will see how both businesses and world governments use the triple bottom line as a basis for goals that are set for sustainability. The Millennium Project was commissioned by the United Nations Secretary General in 2002 to develop a concrete action plan for the world to achieve the Millennium Development Goals and to reverse the grinding poverty, health, and disease affecting billions of people. In 2005, the independent advisory body, headed by Professor Jeffrey Sachs, presented its final recommendations to the General, Secretary General in a synthesis volume, Investing in Development, a Practical Plan to Achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Member states of the United Nations unanimously adopted the Millennium Declaration at the Millennium Summit in September of 2000 at UN headquarters in New York. The summit led to the elaboration of eight Millennium Development Goals to reduce extreme poverty by 2015. In January 2015, the General Assembly began the negotiation process on the post-2015 development agenda. The process culminated in the subsequent adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with 17 sustainable goals at its core at the United Nations Sustainable Development Summit in the September of 2015. Today, the Division for Sustainable Development Goals in the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs provides substantive support and capacity building for the uh, sustainability development goals and the related thematic issues, including water, energy, climate, oceans, urbanization, transport, science and technology, the Global Sustainable Development Report, partnerships, and small island developing states. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015, provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. At its heart, there are 17 sustainable development goals, 
which are an urgent call for action by all countries developed and developing in a global partnership. They recognize that ending poverty and other deprivations must go hand in hand with strategies that improve health and education, reduce inequality, and spur economic growth, all while tackling climate change and working to preserve our oceans and forests. Here are a few examples from the 17 sustainable goals adopted by the United Nations. Number one, no poverty. Eliminate poverty by 2030, implement social protection systems for everyone and create sound regional, national, and international policies that are pro-poor and gender sensitive. Number two, zero hunger. End hunger and all forms of malnutrition Double the agricultural productivity of small-scale farmers, the main source of food and income for many of the world's poor and hungry. Number six is clean water and sanitation. Provide access to clean water and adequate sanitation for all. Reduce water pollution. Increase the efficient use of water to reduce waste. Strengthen the ability of local communities to reach these goals. Number 13 is climate action. Produce national and international policies to reduce future climate change. Take steps to address climate change that has occurred or will inevitably occur. Establish a monetary fund to help developing countries respond. Finally, number 14, life below water. Prevent or significantly reduce ocean pollution. Sustainability manage ocean fisheries and ecosystems. Set aside at least 10% of marine areas for conservation. Increase the ability of small scale fishers to sustainably use their ocean resources. Many nations of the world have developed sustainability planning mechanisms for benchmarking their progress. Most countries that do some form of sustainability assessment create indicators that are unique to that particular place. Using these indicators, nations can develop national policy that makes sense for the long-term health of the country. President Biden's executive order on catalyzing American clean energy industries and jobs through federal sustainability and accompanying federal sustainability plan sets out a range of ambitious goals to deliver an emissions reduction pathway consistent with President Biden's goal of reducing U.S. greenhouse gas emission by 50 to 52 percent from 2005 levels by 2030 and limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius as the science demands. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to power federal facilities with 100% carbon pollution-free electricity, including 50% on a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week basis. This plan will help accelerate a rapidly changing clean energy sector and further increase well-paying union jobs. It adds federal leadership to the carbon pollution free electricity commitments being made by the public, private, and nonprofit leaders across America and around the world. The sustainability plan elements show how the U.S. government can use the power of federal proc procurement to create a more resilient, modern, and climate-ready electricity sector. As part of a whole government approach, agencies at the forefront of electricity procurement, including the Department of Defense and General Services Administration, will help lead development and execution of innovative procurement strategies in coordination with other agencies and consistent with applicable law that leverage the size of the federal government's electricity consumption, unlock economies of scale, promote equity, and achieve cost, paying, cost savings for taxpayers. The strategy will include ways that federally led efforts to expand the carbon free electricity can benefit overburdened underserved communities. Additionally, the federal government will seek ways to pilot and accelerate promising carbon free electricity sources such as green, hydrogen, modular and advanced nuclear reactors and innovative approaches. 
The federal government will develop ways to increase its impact by working with non-federal partners, such as states, tribes, municipalities, electric cooperatives, customer, consumers, and the private sector. The federal government will explore ways to use its supply chain to accelerate progress towards a gr cleaner grid more broadly. Transitioning to carbon-free electricity by 2030 and achieving uh, agency targets will require coordination across agencies to streamline energy purchasing and consolidate and aggregate procurement. The working group will also evaluate progress on equity. The working group will provide semi-annual reports to the National Climate Task Force on actions, findings, and progress towards government-wide goals. The Federal Sustainability Plan sets the federal fleet on a path to zero emission vehicles, or ZEVs. The plan will help further accelerate a rapidly changing transportation sector and further increase well-paying union jobs and support emission reductions in pollution overburdened communities. It establishes the federal government as a leader in clean transportation and builds upon commitments being made by public, private, and nonprofit leaders across America and around the world. The plan, uh, plan's elements show how the federal government can use the power of procurement to continue U.S. climate leadership and in the transportation sector. To ensure effective planning for zero emission vehicles, acquisition and deployment and installation of necessary charging infrastructure, agencies will establish internal process for cost allocation and capital planning on an agency-wide basis and appropriately account for fuel and vehicle maintenance savings achieved via zero emission vehicles. Agencies will build cross-functional teams with staff and from fleet management operations, facilities, finance, and acquisition departments to identify and plan for the investments necessary for a rapid zero emissions vehicle deployment. Access to electrical, electric vehicle supply equipment and hydrogen stations is critical for effective zero emissions vehicle deployment. Currently, there are only about 700 federal charging stations, including some designated for the use of employees and visitors. Installing sufficient charging infrastructure to support rapid vehicle deployment to meet the zero emission vehicle targets will be a significant challenge that requires an integrated agency level strategy and long-term view. As with any new technologies, lack of knowledge and experience can hamper adoption. Training of federal agency personnel will be necessary to, and critical to success, including highlighting the excellent real-world experience of zero emissions vehicle users and fostering interagency cooperation and peer-to-peer -peer learnings based on successful zero emission vehicle deployment in federal fleets. Fleet and facility managers will collaborate to manage the overall charging load leading to the integrated operation and coordinated management of building systems and vehicles. The Federal Sustainability Plan establishes an ambitious path to achieve a net zero emissions buildings goal by 2045. The federal government will work across new building construction, major renovations and existing real property to electrify systems, decrease energy use, reduce water consumption and cut waste. Federal agencies will set ambitious data-driven 2030 goals and annual targets for energy and water reductions based on leading performance benchmarks for building type categories and the composition of the agency's building portfolio. As part of this strategy, the federal government will use performance contracting to reduce emissions, improve efficiency, and modernize facilities while develop, delivering financial savings. The federal government will ensure that when it builds, it builds better. All new construction and major modernization projects larger than 25,000 gross square feet entering the new planning stage will be designed, constructed, and operated to be a net zero emissions by 2030 and where feasible net zero water and waste. The current administration announced the first ever energy and climate performance standard for the country's 300,000 federal buildings. 
As the single largest energy consumer and building manager in the nation, the building's performance standard will help the U.S. government lower its energy bills, increase resilience, cut emissions, create new markets, grow good paying jobs, and demonstrate leadership to reduce climate change. Federal agencies will set ambitious data-driven 2030 goals and annual targets for energy and water reductions based on leading performance benchmarks for building type categories and the composition of the agency's building portfolio. Agencies will annually divert 50% of building non-hazardous waste and construction and demolition debris by 2025 and 75% by 2030. Federal agencies will also pursue net zero waste buildings, campuses, and installations where feasible. In addition, agencies will reduce or minimize the use of toxic and hazardous chemicals and materials, particularly where such reduction will assist the agency in reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. New construction and major modernization products larger than 25,000 gross square feet entering the planning stage after September 30th of 2021 will be designed and constructed to leading sustainable design standards. At a minimum, these construction projects must meet the sustainable design requirements. In accordance with the Energy Act of 2020, which requires agencies to complete at least 50% of all identified life cycle cost effective energy and water savings measures through the performance contracting, Agencies will expand use of performance contracting to improve efficiency, achieve en energy, wa water, and greenhouse gas emission reductions, expand use of carbon pollution-free electricity, increase infrastructure resilience, modernize buildings, and support achievement of net zero goals. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to achieve net zero emissions from federal procurement by 2050 while increasing the sustainability of federal supply chains. These supply chains initiatives include major contractor greenhouse gas emission disclosures paired with science-based targets, a buy clean initiative for low carbon materials, and a sustainable products policy. These programs will advance America's industrial competitiveness to supply the low carbon and sustainable goods of the future while creating well-paying union jobs. Major federal contractors will publicly report their annual corporate level greenhouse gas emissions and set targets to reduce them. Major contractors will also disclose climate risks and vulnerabilities that may affect their future economic stability or their ability to deliver goods and services that are critical to federal agency missions. These requirements will improve the resilience of federal supply chains and to increasing climate risks, strengthen the competitive position of American companies, and help reduce contract costs through e increased efficiency. Production of high volume materials associated with the construction of buildings and infrastructure, especially concrete and steel, is a major source of global greenhouse gas emissions. Reducing these emissions, referred to as embodied emissions because they are emitted during the manufacture of purchased products, is a critical piece of reducing emissions in the federal supply chain. Agencies are already required to consider the life cycle costs of alternatives in procurement decisions. Strengthening life cycle cost approaches where feasible and applicable to include the social cost greenhouse gases, the incremental future economic damages caused by each ton of carbon pollution can be a valuable tool to guide agencies toward investments that are compatible with the low carbon economy of the future. The federal government will maximize procurement of sustainable products and services, including Energy Star rated equipment, products that are bio-based, made from recycled content, water efficient, fuel efficient, made with safer chemical ingredients, and non-ozone depleting, and products that have earned third-party eco-labels reviewed and recommended by the Environmental Protection Agency. 
The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to achieve net zero emissions across federal operations by 2050. To achieve this goal, the federal government will transition its infrastructure to zero emission vehicles and buildings powered by carbon, carbon pollution free electricity. It will also transform its operations to meet a net zero supply chain, require federal agencies to set goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and partner with leading domestic and international organizations to accelerate progress. By leveraging its power of procurements, the federal government will accelerate the country's transition to a clean energy economy and create well-paying union jobs during the process. The federal government will execute a whole of government approach to increase use, production, and facilitation of carbon pollution free electricity and storage to achieve this goal. Each federal agency will require, require zero emissions vehicles in all vehicle classes as vehicles come to market. Each federal agency will require zero emissions vehicles for 100% of all light duty vehicles by 2027 and all medium and heavy duty vehicles by 2035. Federal agencies will achieve the path to acquisition targets through planning, coordination, and collaboration informed by agency mission, zero emissions vehicle availability, and funding. The federal government will work across its portfolio of owned and leased buildings to increase water and energy efficiency, reduce waste, drive decarbonization of federal buildings, and achieve net zero emissions across the federal portfolio of buildings, campuses, and installations by 2045. In order to achieve net zero procurement by 2050, while increasing the sustainability of the federal supply chains, the federal government will leverage the power of its procurement to catalyze action by federal suppliers. These supply chain initiatives include major contract greenhouse, emission, ga greenhouse gas emission disclosures paired with science-based targets, a buy clean initiative for low carbon materials, and a sustainable products policy. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to prepare federal agency policy programs, operations, and infrastructure to adopt adaptive and resilient strategies for future climate impacts. Federal agencies will develop climate adaptation and resilience plans that evalu evaluate the most significant climate-based risks and vulnerabilities for agency operations and missions and identify action to manage those risks and vulnerabilities. The President's Federal Sustainability Plan also establishes the Climate Adaptation and Resilience Federal Leaders Working Group, which will advance agency coordination, continual learning, and implementation in areas such as climate data and tools, infrastructure adaptation, and adaptation metrics and evaluation. This approach will minimize disruptors and destruction of federal infrastructure programs and services. Agencies will develop climate adaptation and resilience plans that evaluate the most significant climate change related risks and vulnerabilities in agency missions and operations and identify actions to manage and mitigate those risks and vulnerabilities. Agencies will provide annual updates to these plans. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to mainstream sustainability within the federal workforce. The plan's elements build internal capacity through engagement, education, and training on federal sustainability, climate adaptation, and environmental stewardship. Federal agencies also will incorporate sustainability and climate adaptation into their human capital planning, including optimal staffing, training, and associated resources. Federal agencies will foster a culture of sustainability and climate action across all disciplines and functions and encourage outstanding performance, including incorporation of sustainability objectives in the performance plans of agency executives, managers, and staffs where appropriate. Federal agencies will integrate achievement of sustainability goals and climate adaptation and resilience into agency human capital planning to ensure they have the staff, training, and resources to effectively meet federal sustainability plan goals. 
The Office of Personal Management will identify opportunities for including or expanding environmental sustainability and climate adaptation training content in existing federal training programs, including Office of Personal Management leadership training programs, as well as strategies for incorporating sustainability into performance plans. Agencies will develop strategies, identify relevant programs, and outline actions to bolster employee engagement and training to meet goals. Training will include the subject of equity in climate resiliency and sustainability. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to create a more equitable future for America by incorporating environmental justice and equity into the federal sustainability. Federal agencies will consider the goals of the Justice 40 initiative when ma making decisions related to federal facilities, fleets, and operations. Agencies will also address actions taken to advance environmental justice within their annual sustainability plans and climate adaptation and resilience plans. Additionally, federal environmental just justice representative will serve on the newly established Federal Chief Sustainability Council. To incorporate equity, agencies will support Executive Order 13985, which is advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government, which helps ensure that government contracting and procurement opportunities are available on an equal basis. Agencies will consider or incorporating the goals of the Justice 40 initiative into operational planning and decision making regarding federal facilities, fleets, and operations. Specifically, they will consider how federal investments might be made toward the goal that 40% of the overall benefits flow to disadvantaged communities. The Federal Sustainability Plan outlines an ambitious path to leverage domestic and international partnerships to accelerate progress and catalyze greater action at home and abroad. We will place senior leaders from the private and nonprofit sectors into limited term appointments to bring innovative perspectives and expertise to assist federal agencies with sustainability and climate preparedness efforts. We have also launched the Greening Government Initiative, a first of its kind forum for engaging governments around the world in greening government operations. The federal government will partner with state, tribal and local green governments to enable this enable information and best practice sharing to accelerate sustainability initiatives at every level of government. Let's take a look at how other countries and major cities from around the world are planning to meet the sustainability goals set forth by the United Nations. China's environmental crisis the result of decades of rapid industrialization not only threatens the health and livelihoods of the country's 1.4 billion people, but also the global fight against climate change. As the world's largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in recent years, China suffers from notoriously bad air pollution. Its carbon intensive industries have caused additional environmental challenges, including water scarcity and soil contamination. And like the rest of the world, China will face increasingly harsh consequences of climate change in the coming decades, including flooding and droughts. In response, Beijing has implemented policies to curb emissions and stem further degradation, such as by signing the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate and pledging to be carbon neutral by 2060. However, following through won't be easy, experts say, as the government struggles to maintain economic growth, ease public discontent, and overcome tensions with the United States, the second largest emitter. The President of China has recognized climate change as one of his administration's top concerns, and Beijing has made a variety of pledges to address it. These include achieving carbon neutrality by 2060, reaching peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2030, having renewable energy sources account for 25% of total energy consumption by 2030, reducing carbon intensity or the amount of carbon emitted per unit of gross domestic product by more than 65% by 2030, installing enough solar and wind power generators 
to have a combined capacity of 1.2 billion kilowatts by 2030, and finally, boosting forest coverage by about 6 billion cubic meters by 2030. Sustainable development in India encompasses a variety of development schemes in social, clean tech such as clean energy, clean water, and sustainable agriculture, and human resource segments having taught, caught the attention of both central and state governments and also public and private sectors. In fact, India is expected to begin the greening of its national income accounting, making depletion in natural resources wealth a key component of its measurement of gross domestic product. India's sustained efforts towards reducing greenhouse gases will ensure that the country's per capita emission of greenhouse gases will continue to be low until 2030-2031, and it is estimated that the per capita emission in 2031 will be lower than per capita emission of 2005, according to a new study. Even in 2031, India's per capita greenhouse gas emissions would stay under four tons of CO2, which is lower than the per capita emissions of 4.22 tons of CO2 in 2005. In May of 2018, London Mayor Sadiq Khan released London's first integrated environmental strategy covering air quality, green infrastructure, climate change mitigation and energy, waste, adaptation, noise, and low carbon circular economy. The plan is compatible with the Paris Agreement's ambition of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and commits London to becoming a zero carbon city by 2050. London is among the cities to have already peaked its emissions. The London Environmental Strategy is supported by an implementation plan which details the next steps, policies, and programs, which was also released in May of 2018, and by Zero Carbon London, a 1.5 degree compatible plan, which was released in 2018. Zero Carbon London explains the evidence that underpins the London Environmental strategy and outlines the powers and funding needed from the national government to deliver it. The London Environment Strategy outlines the evidence and actions under each topic area which are expanded in the implementation plan. The strategy focuses on air quality improvements alongside policies to tackle the city's biggest emission sectors, particularly buildings and on-road transport. New York City has been a leader on climate action since the release of the first Plan NYC 16 years ago, and today the leadership is more necessary than ever. Climate change has shifted from a threat on the horizon to a reoccurring aspect of our weather with impacts felt disproportionately in vulnerable communities, leading to hundreds of preventable deaths every year. At the same time, the benefits of climate action are increasingly clear in cleaner water, better mobility, safer homes, and growing green jobs and businesses. Responding to and preparing for climate change means improvements to the daily lives of the New York City population and a future that is more equitable, healthy, and resilient. Much of the work has stemmed from the emphasis on sustainability embedded in past New York City plans and was enhanced by the initiatives developed since 2014. New York City has firmly established itself among the community of global urban leaders in sustainability. New York City shares this leadership with the most progressive capitals of commerce and culture in the world, but there remains much more to be done if New York City is to stake their claim as the most sustainable big city in the world. Today, when you walk into a professional sports venue, there's a good chance the facility is LEED certified. You may gain entry with a paperless ticket, watch your team play under energy conserving LED lights, and catch replays on a giant screen powered by solar panels. You might even chow down on grass-fed beef hot dogs and compost your leftovers. 
Major League Baseball and clubs will continue the important tradition of celebrating Earth Day on Friday, April 2nd, with particular focus on highlighting everyday environment sustainability practices that can be applied in ballparks, offices, and homes. Beyond Earth Day, Major League Baseball will continue to focus on environmental awareness at various points throughout the season, including the MLB All-Star Week and through important partnerships, including Players for the Planet. Major League Baseball is mirroring club sustainability best practices in the league's headquarters offices in New York City, as well as satellite offices in Boulder, Colorado and San Francisco, California. Major League Baseball employees are encouraged to use reusable water bottles and coffee mugs, improving recycling efforts through updated signage and education, and reducing energy consumption through motion-sensored LED lighting and an updated television schedule that reduced energy consumption by 328 hours during the off-season. Additionally, Major League Baseball employees in New York City participated in the Central Park Conservancy on Beautification Volunteer Project at the park on Monday, April 18th of 2022, as well as an e-building, a building-wide e-waste drive on Wednesday, April 20th of 2022.